going on guys? I'm back. Another cold day in the garage here. So um, my game plan, I got my book right here. Um, we're going to go through and see if we can't save some money. We're going to put this up on the uh, jack stands here. I don't have a lift yet and go ahead and start taking everything apart. My game plan here is to swap out my ring and pinion set, see how the seals are, see how the bearings are. They'll probably get replaced too. This will be my first time doing this. So, you know, watch along with me and hopefully we both learn something. Um, I got a couple tools I'll show you here specifically for this project that I just bought. Um, one of which came from Harbor Freight. I got a good deal because it was President's Day. So I got it for about 140 bucks. Um, but basically the game plan here is gonna be figure out how to replace a ring and pinion. This is something I've had done on other cars, but I've never done myself because I've always been um, a bit worried. Sometimes you need some specific tools and, and extra know-how. So hopefully um, this book right here is gonna be, it's gonna be my friend and, and our friend and we'll get through it together. And maybe when we're done, you guys will know how to replace your ring and pinion too. So this could save you, I don't know, 600 bucks in labor. So stay tuned, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm gonna try and do less talk and more working in this one. Um, so hopefully it'll be interesting. All right, thanks guys. Okay, so the one thing I wanted to show you here is the 20 ton hydraulic press that I picked up from Harbor Freight. Um, this thing's gonna be awesome. You can lower this up and down. You've got different settings right here. Um, put your handle in right here, pump it down and you can press in bearings. So we're gonna try this out, see how this works. I got a couple other specialty tools that I'm gonna have to pick up along the way, but um, hopefully this is money well spent. Okay, so we got the uh, the wheels and the disc brakes removed. Um, this is the kit that I got from Little Manufacturing Shop. It's pretty trick, worked out all right. Um, I had to make up some cheapo angle iron custom brackets here. I'll make something better in the future, but just to get my emergency brakes ran. Um, you guys are all smart, you know this, but I'm gonna hold this up with some zip ties. And the reason there is even though this one rests pretty well here on this emergency brake cable, um, you don't want to put any stress on your brake lines, namely that one right there. So I'll grab some zip ties and uh, get that zip tied up out of the way. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay over my heater. I'll try and speak loudly. Um, got my book here. We're just going to try and follow the instructions. So if you guys get this book, I believe page 35 kind of starts and shows you kind of how to remove everything. From what I've read initially, um, the pinion nut can be a little bit difficult to remove. So I think they recommend, I'll show you where that is just in case you're unfamiliar. Oh man, I get up under here. Okay, pinion nut, it's that big guy right there. So we'll remove that. We'll leave the axles in for now. And the thought process is this sometimes is pretty hard to remove. So I think by breaking that loose with the axles in, It'll keep them from spinning. Otherwise, we got to find a way to clamp everything. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, next thing we'll do after we're done with that, we'll get up under here. We'll remove that cover and we'll start draining the oil out. And um, that's probably where I'll call it for tonight. I got work early tomorrow morning. Okay, I think that's an, either an inch and an eighth or an inch and a quarter. I got my. Got my Milwaukee here, 18 volt impact. We'll see if that's gonna work, if not.
awesome in terms of performance. I don't know how I didn't realize this. If you count the number of ring gear teeth as you spin it, and then count the number of pinion teeth on your pinion, and you divide your ring gear teeth by your pinion gear teeth, you'll get your rear end ratio. And this is a 307, which is pretty sweet. That means I thought it was peppy with a 307. It just needs lower gears. This thing's gonna rip. I'm excited. Here's a limited slip. There you go. Pretty cool stuff. Um, what else can I tell you? Let's see. Honestly, oil looks pretty good. I may not have to do the bearings in this. We shall see. Very cool. 307s. Nice. Time to put some low boys in there. I got really nerdy today, guys. Um, I made a few different tables. So what's important here is you can determine what your cruising, you know, whether, whether you want to solve for speed, like miles per hour, RPM, you can do all that. All you need to know is you need to know your gear ratios, you need to know your tire height, which you can look up, and you need to know the rear end ratio. So basically, I created a couple different tables here for the stock 307s, what's in there right now, and there's a cap. Sorry about that, my awesome cat got in the way. Okay, if we go back here, we look at 307s. Um, the takeaway from this is if you know your tire diameter, which you can either measure or look up, your gear ratio, which at this point I assume you know, or you're picking one, so you can choose that, and then you know uh, your gear ratios for each of your gears. So first we'll just look at cruising speed. So I'm talking about when you're on the freeway, you're at a constant speed, you're in high gear. So for my T56, um, this has a double overdrive, meaning first through fourth um, are regular, and fifth and sixth are both overdrive. Sixth gear is a 0.5 overdrive, that's a huge overdrive. So um, when you look at these graphs, you can kind of see basically on the vertical axis, you have uh, engine speed and RPM, and then on the horizontal axis, you have miles an hour. So you can see in each gear, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, at maximum RPM or any RPM, what speed are you at? So if we click to 373s, the graph changes. If we click to 411s, the graph changes again. It's a little bit hard to tell. If I go to this type of view and we look at what's on the left-hand side of the screen, just focus on this side, and we scroll down. So we're starting at 307s, we go down to 373s and 411s. What's happening here is the graph is tilting this way. Okay, so um, as you know, when you have a lower gear ratio, which is a higher numerical gear, um, for the same vehicle speed, you're gonna have a higher RPM. You're gonna have more acceleration, but you're gonna turn more RPMs on the freeway, which may or may not be bad. So, get out of here. Um, if we go and we look now at the top right-hand side of the screen, uh, I'll show you, let me zoom in here. My computer stops updating. Um, these are a couple of different scenarios. So I've got 65, 70, 75, 80, and 85 miles an hour. So this is just kind of like a range of highway speeds in sixth gear with 0 0.5 to 1. So we can look and see at these different speeds, how will the 307 be? How will the 373 be? How will the 411 be? So um, worst case scenario, let's say I'm doing 85 miles an hour, which probably is not going to happen very often, but... Um, you know, we've got an 80 mile an hour speed limit here in Utah. So 2183, 2200 RPM is all you'll be turning with 411s. Right now at 85, I'm at 1600 RPM. So 307s are definitely too tall. I do not want that. I don't think you want that for something performance oriented. You're probably looking at 355s, 373s, 411s. Um, I'm not going to go any lower than that. So I'm going to be probably picking, you know, between one of these two. So this is just showing you what your speed is going to be um, in top gear at, at, you know, or these RPMs or vice versa. The other thing you can look at is you can look and see. Now, these graphs here are a little bit different. This is showing you wheel torque in foot pounds against wheel speed in mile an hour. This is each gear. So this is first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear. It goes off the graph here because 
you know, theoretically with a 307 gear, you could do, I don't know, 280 miles an hour. Now you'd obviously never go that fast. Your, this car does not have enough power to go that fast. Um, but it just gives you an idea. You can kind of see, um, peak wheel torques or, or wheel torque versus speed. So why might this be useful? Well, you can get an idea, um, of sacrificing acceleration for maybe traction or drivability. So here, for example, at 40 miles an hour, um, 4,000 RPM, I'm making peak torque and first gear, okay? Redlining, first gear, 55 miles an hour. If I go down here to 410s, I'm never gonna get to 55 miles per hour, okay? 55 miles an hour is not gonna occur until 3,000 RPM, or more um, in in the next gear. So so basically, this is telling me first gear is only good for like forty miles an hour. Here, you're making a lot more torque because you have this multiplier of your lower gear ratio. So you can just kind of look at these graphs and you can kind of play around and think to yourself, where am I going to be driving? What kind of performance do I want? You know, we can go and compare the other graph earlier and look at. Um, or the table earlier and look at highway speeds, or maybe you want to look at roll racing and you want to say that I'm going to be in third gear at 55 miles an hour. Well, this is pretty much perfect because I'm at peak torque in third gear at 55 miles an hour versus if I was in third gear at 55 miles an hour here, I'm way down low on my torque curve. So, you know, it just, it just goes to show that there's different things to look at. Um, I kind of hoped after I did all this that I would be able to determine exactly, um, exactly what gear ratio I wanted. But as it turns out, I think 373s or 410s will work. I just need to pick which one. The trade-off for 410s, a little bit worse mileage, potentially less traction in the lower gears, but it'll accelerate quicker. It might be a little bit cooler. 373s might be a little more streetable, but you give up some acceleration. So I just need to make that choice for myself. Um, hopefully these tables will help me. Maybe they'll help you. If you have questions, um, please ask them. And guys, I look at every single one of your comments. So please like my videos, subscribe, leave comments, leave questions. I love hearing from you. I will always respond. In the next video, we're going to take apart the differential even more. We're going to remove the axles. We're going to remove um, the pinion, we're going to move the ring gear, and then we're going to make a decision what we're going to do. We're going to order everything, put it back together, and then go out and drive it. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.